Today, I wanna to explore with you a few different intentions or tips that you can apply while you're running to see if you can feel even better and more powerful while running. Now that being said, you can also think of running as a series of single leg hops. This requires single leg strength, stability, control, power, elastic energy, and endurance. So as you go to apply these tips, if they just don't quite feel right, then it might mean that you need to break down the components a little bit more and do some intentional strength training to give you the tools to then be able to just make it happen. The idea of these tips is that we're trying to encourage, but not force anything into action, okay? So now with that being said, let's move forward and think about some things while you're running and see if that can just help you feel a little more connection and feel a little bit more efficient and energized while you're running. First things first, is we're gonna think about maintaining a stack of your rib cage over your pelvis. Now this can mean different things depending on where your kind of natural resting position might be. So if you are someone who tends to be in more of an anterior pelvic tilt or flared forward ribs, you might have to think about ribs kind of shifting back, lower abs lifting up, and kind of stacking back here a little bit more. On the flip side, if you're someone who already tends to kind of be lean back or tends to tuck your hips a little more, maybe you need to think about shifting forward and lifting your tailbone up a little bit to get you more into this stacked position. You can also just explore keeping it simple by thinking about being tall as if someone is pulling the backside of your head or your ponytail up and sometimes that can just naturally help you kind of self-organize and lift and unload your pelvic floor and lower abs. Now, if you find what's trying to get into that stack, you're really having to grip or force or you know, hold tension in your butt to kind of hold there, then that means that we need some individual tools and mobility pieces in your rib cage, your pelvis and your core, even your feet to help make that stack happen. But sometimes just adding in that slight intention can help remind your body to use those tools that you're given during individual strengthening exercises and apply it to while you're running. Now, once you've maintained that stack, this is gonna help with diaphragm and pelvic floor function coordination as well as ab connection. We're then thinking about keeping this stack and then adding in a slight forward lean. This is gonna help you with this intention of kind of coming forward and then pushing the ground away from you to help you continue to move forward. It can also help you kind of keep a little bit of tension in your calf and Achilles, which is gonna help with the elastic recoil to move you forward. When we're thinking about this forward lean, you're making sure that you're not just thrusting your ribs forward or shoving your neck forward, but again, keeping that nice stack while you lean forward over those feet, okay? Now, thinking about feet, what you can kind of experiment with is marching in place. As you're marching in place, think about where do I feel my feet hitting the ground? And that place is what you're trying to think about hitting as you go to move forward. When we walk, we're gonna go through more of our full kind of ankle and foot mechanics with it. But when we run, again, we're staying a little bit more loaded in that calf and Achilles area and in our midfoot as we're creating this good stiffness to help push us forward. This is part of why adequate foot and calf strength is important for being able to sustain running and being able to get that rubber band to lengthen and then load, but not overly lengthen so much that you lose that elastic energy and just kind of collapse to the ground. Anyway, kind of experiment with that march in place. And then you can slowly think about, okay, now I'm gonna lean forward and then I'm gonna go for it and kind of keep thinking of that foot placement. Now, when we go to run and we're looking at the upper body, if someone is flinging their arms around side to side, forwards and backwards, or not moving at all, those can all be indications that you're lacking some thoracic rotation. So if someone's swinging their arms excessively, that might not actually mean that they're rotating in their thoracic spine, but kind of just faking it uh, with their arms. So with this thoracic rotation, what this is representing is the ability for us to develop this kind of cross connection in our abs that helps us get over onto a leg and off of another one. Again, sometimes we need to break in individual components of accessing different parts of our rib cage to be able to expand, having our scapula be able to kind of wiggle on our rib cage and move freely. 
but thinking about, okay, as you're running, how can you help your overall energy with you moving forward versus if you're swinging side to side, now a lot of your energy is being displaced sideways instead of this overall trajectory of moving forward. You might also notice too that maybe you have an easier time kind of rotating one way, but not going back in the other direction. So that's some asymmetries that you'll need to address in your rib cage and your core to be able to help with that movement. That can not just affect your abs, but also affect how you load in your hips. So they're not having to overwork to help get you off of one leg and onto the other. Now, when we're thinking about hips, we're gonna think about two things here. We're gonna think about one, running with intention. So a lot of times when people are first kind of starting running, they might run a little bit shyly and kind of you know, being really ginger and timid about it. Well, sometimes that can mean that we kind of just like bog down and, and lose that kind of pop with it and lose that good kind of uh, intention to help us move forward. So instead, think about running with a little bit more confidence. Think about running with a little bit more intention. Maybe doing some interval work where you're trying to run for a shorter period of time, but with a little faster speed and see how that feels versus the slow, okay, let's just survive this kind of hang back, you know, as you're moving forward. And we also want to think about pushing the ground away. Okay. That's what's going to help us propel ourselves forward and get us for that next landing. Remember I talked about running being a series of kind of single leg hops. Sometimes people have the tendency to kind of like pull themselves forward too much with the front of their hips. And this can be them with their butt kind of tucked under rib cage, kind of leaning back. Uh, so thinking more about, okay, with that stack and that forward lean, how can I think about pushing the ground away and really feeling my glutes and my calves propelling me forward? That is then going to help with then that next set of, okay, everything's nice and tight on that backside to take that shock absorption when we land to then spring and press us back forward. Lastly, I want to talk about breathing. So I mentioned that that stack of that rib cage over our pelvis is going to help coordinate the diaphragm and the pelvic floor and the core kind of all moving together to contain pressure and to be able to move dynamically like it's supposed to. Too often people are told to kind of constantly hold in their abs or hold their pelvic floor up and tight and hold a constant Kegel the entire time that they're running. Well, that's going to result in poor breathing mechanics and poor pelvic floor function that can contribute to leakings or feeling of heaviness. Because if you're constantly doing this with a muscle all the time, eventually it's going to fatigue and not be able to function like it's supposed to. Our abs and our pelvic floor are meant to move and dynamically lengthen and contract. Okay. Some of that rib cage mechanics, some of the strength training of taking your hips through that full range of motion, teaching things how to sock, shock absorb, but also recoil back out is going to help with that. But when it comes to just simply thinking about breathing while you're running, you're going to think about this nice 360 inhale. So we're thinking about inhaling down, getting that breath to expand out. And then as we exhale, everything kind of coming back and out the other way. If you have the tendency to fall into a shallow breathing pattern and just breathe up into your neck, then that's going to contribute to neck tightness and eliminate that nice dynamic mobility of your diaphragm, core, and pelvic floor. If you're someone who notices a lot of neck tension or ab cramping while you're running, that could be something to look into of, okay, how am I breathing? Or also thinking about how that stack is going to affect how you're breathing, right? So if I'm constantly coming forward like this, then that's going to affect how I breathe and not be able to get that breath to go down. We can also think if you fall into that shallow breathing pattern, that that's this tendency that will also drive your head forward as you're kind of gasping, grasping for air with it. So again, thinking about how things can kind of connect to each other and how, again, I can give you these gentle suggestions to try and tips to kind of connect into, but also thinking of, ah, man, if I'm just trying to create more tension to kind of make this happen, then we need to break it down more, look at some of your strength training moves, look at some of the asymmetries going on in your body, how you're able to manage load on one leg, get off of that, le uh, that leg, and then on to the other leg to get that reciprocal movement pattern that is needed for running in both the hips and the ribcage.